as people that live in society, we can't help but feel pressure from society. And when that is said, societal pressure, we usually think of bigger things. But really, it boils down to even the most microscopic details in our life. Those of you that have children will notice your children want a certain toy. And more than anything else, sometimes they want that toy because someone else at school has it. They want to get what somebody else has. That's a form of societal pressure. Your children start getting a little bit older and they want to dress a certain way. And the idea of them wanting to dress that certain way didn't come from their own imagination. It came from something they saw on TV that was defined to them as the way to dress. Or, or someone they saw dressed that way at school and is popular. And that sort of becomes the defining thing for them. And they want to dress that way or look that way or buy that gadget or have a phone. Little kids wanting to have a phone, right? What do you need a phone for? I don't know, my friends have it too. Why can't I have it? You probably, parents have heard that logic before. They have it, why can't I have it? When you get a little bit older, the same societal pressure, it takes different forms. It could be something as simple as you parking your car at your office in the parking lot, and your coworker has a nicer car, and you go, man, I need to get ahead. Look at what these guys are driving. You know, the neighborhood you live in, and you go visit one of your friend's house who lives in a nicer neighborhood, and the thought is running in your mind, man, when am I going to get to this point? I need to be where this guy is at or better. We're always comparing ourselves to what other people have. And we're constantly vying, consciously or subconsciously, to get what other people have also. This is what I mean by societal pressure. Whether it comes in the, whether it comes in the form of you dressing, or it comes in the form of what you purchase, where you put your money, what kind of career you want to pursue. A lot of times our parents, they give in to societal pressure. So whether their children are made for that or not, they will make sure they say to their children, you better become a medical doctor. Because if you don't, you're a failure at life. Everybody else around us that are successful, they're all doctors. So that's the only thing in life to do. And I'm not saying being a physician is a bad practice. But if your son or daughter becomes a doctor and they did not want to be, I would never want to be their patient. <laughs> I wouldn't want to go to them. If the only reason they chose this profession is because their parents forced them to. Or because of some kind of societal pressure. These are pressures that exist all around us. This comparison stuff is all around us. And it's so, it can become so strong that a person can almost feel enslaved. They're not even free anymore. Which is really ironic that we're living in a, in a society that prides itself over being free, right? It prides itself over having independent freedom. I can do whatever I want, dress however I want, talk however I want, you know, look however I want, spend my money on whatever I want. That's the thing that makes the society pride itself, take pride in itself. And yet, if you go to somewhere as simple as high school, you'll find a bunch of kids that are dressed almost exactly the same. They're just, just almost exactly the same. All the hip-hop kids, are, they look the same. All the goth kids look the same. All the emo kids look the same. It's almost like they go through a uniform. And even the way they talk has to be a certain way to fit in with that crowd. And if you don't fit in with that crowd, then you're, you're, out, you're an outcast. And so when you look at that, I don't, I don't see freedom when I see that. What I see is cultural slavery. This young man or this young woman can't even make that decision of how to look or how to talk or how to walk for themselves. They have to conform to what is going on around them. And sometimes it's willing, sometimes you submit that that is the better way to live. That is the better way to dress or to talk. Or that's the better thing to do with my time. That's the kind of music I want to be addicted to. Or these are the kinds of practices I'll do. Whatever, that's one conscious decision a person makes, that that's the life to live. And sometimes it's even pressured. I've met Muslim teenage kids that have come to me in private, and when you look at them, they're like, man, this, is this guy in a gang or something? And they'll come to you in private and they'll be crying, because they say, I don't want to dress like this. I don't want to look like this. But if I don't, I'll get beat up at school. <laughs> that's cultural slavery. That's a form of slavery. But it's not just about the youth.